As I played through Amnesia Rebirth, there was one thought in particular which stuck with me from beginning to end, namely, that it's a game which has a lot of interesting ideas and mechanics at its core, ideas and mechanics which have tons of potential, but so often don't end up being very well realised in the final product. And with that being the case, I wanted to conduct a more thorough analysis of the design behind some of those ideas, and the way they're executed on, to try and pinpoint exactly why they don't land quite as well as they perhaps should have. And where better place to start than with the game's introduction. Oh, and before I start chattering away, do note that there will be spoilers for the entire game from here on out, and also that despite my criticisms perhaps being more numerous than my praise, this is a game that I did enjoy and would recommend that every horror fan plays. At the start of Amnesia Rebirth, players find themselves in the shoes of Anastasi Trianon, known as Tazi for short, disorientated and alone following a plane crash in the Algerian desert during a mining expedition. Tazi seemingly begins to suffer the effects of a somewhat unusual illness, which she manages to heal herself of at least temporarily using the medication Laudanum. On paper, it sounds like an excellent setup, doesn't it? And it absolutely is. The game throws just enough intrigue at players from its outset in the form of Tazi's opening monologue, a brief glimpse of a world that definitely isn't our own, and the aforementioned unusual sickness, that right away there's already plenty of questions which need answering, and an atmosphere of uncertainty beginning to form. It really is great stuff. Unfortunately, however, while Rebirth's first few minutes do an excellent job of getting players' blood pumping and their minds racing, everything after does completely the opposite. An overly long walk through the desert featuring a heat exhaustion mechanic which is all but forgotten about after this point is followed swiftly by players entering a set of caves and an exposition dump which would be inexcusable in the middle of most games, let alone mere minutes into one. Within this initial part of the caves prior to entering Rebirth's first dark area, there are 16 different notes to find, in addition to the four found prior to entering the caves, for a grand total of 20 which can be discovered and examined in the first 20 minutes or so of the game alone. And worse still, most of these notes are used as attempts to develop the character of Tazi's husband Salim and the rest of the crew all in one go. These are important characters players need to care about for the story to be effective, but with so much information to absorb and so many names thrown at players at once, it quickly becomes over overwhelming and perhaps even difficult for players to reconcile all the different crew members' separate plot threads. And that's before also taking into consideration the flashbacks, which accompany many of these notes and further interrupt gameplay. Rebirth does a great job of building intrigue prior to players taking full control of Tarzi, but then destroys any sense of momentum in the caves just moments later, with constant stop-start gameplay which is incredibly jarring to say the least. Tarzi's amnesia works so well as a plot device because players join a story in media res, that is, they join a story which is already some way towards being told, and the amnesia therefore puts players and Tarzi on equal footing in terms of the information available to them at the beginning of the game. This then hopefully means that players are better able to empathise with, or or even share the emotions Tazi goes through as more is revealed, as both are experiencing them from a similar viewpoint. However, the downside of this approach, which Frictional doesn't manage to overcome, is that the gaps in Tazi's memory need to be filled somehow in a manner which continues to engage players not just during the opening, but throughout Rebirth's entire runtime. Instead, what players get is an exposition dump using notes and flashbacks which aren't even engaging when first encountered, and actively detract from the game's pacing at this very early stage. And what is an even greater shame is that this combination of a story which at its core I genuinely believe has the potential to be brilliant, and a lack of finesse in the way Frictional Games chooses to tell it, is unfortunately symptomatic of the way Amnesia Rebirth delivers its narrative as a whole. There's plenty of great threads within the game's plot, Tarzi and Salim's relationship prior to the trip and what happened to their daughter to Alice, the mysterious events which occurred between the crew in the desert following the plane crash, the history of the otherworldly civilization, and finally how Rebirth's predecessor, Amnesia the Dark Descent, is connected to everything going on, to name but a few. But the way Rebirth unravels these threads only becomes more heavy-handed the further the game progresses. Frictional's early practice of using huge quantities of notes combined with flashbacks to deliver exposition in a way that constantly breaks up gameplay continues throughout Rebirth, and is even supplemented by further interruptions by Tazi herself. Live for the child, like he said. Find the others. Get home. Both of us. I understand that there is a lot of story which needs to be told, and a great deal of background information which players need to digest in order to understand events to their fullest extent, but because it causes such constant interruptions to gameplay, there are two avenues I think Frictional should have considered during development. 1. Make the game longer so that the story doesn't feel like it's being squeezed into too tight a runtime, which would hopefully result in there being longer periods of uninterrupted gameplay, or 2. Create a more tightly written story so that it better fits Rebirth in its present form. 
as it stands. What you end up with with Rebirth is a title where plot and gameplay are constantly at odds with each other, which is really regrettable. Rebirth even features a message at its start which reads, This game should not be played to win. Instead, immerse yourself in this world and story. Fear and darkness are your enemies. If you have to tell players to immerse themselves in your world and story before your game even really begins, that should be of great concern during development. If your story is well written, and it's presented in a thoughtful and engaging manner, then you should trust that players will be quite capable of becoming immersed of their own accord. Last but not least, before I move on, I also want to quickly highlight the frankly extraordinary amount of times players complete an objective, but are then forced down an entirely different path due to unforeseen circumstances completely outside their control. I haven't counted how many times exactly it happens, because it would make me sad, but it's a lot, and the mere fact it occurs enough times that it's noticeable is not a good thing. The formula for how events usually play out in Amnesia quickly becomes obvious. Players enter an area, and are blocked from progressing for one reason or another. They then solve a number of puzzles, often while avoiding enemies and managing their fear level, in order to clear a path. But then just as players are ready to move on using this newly created route, some kind of problem occurs, whether it be a fall, an enemy encounter, or something else, which then sets them on a different path entirely. It happens in the fort, as players create a shell, blow open some doors to progress, suffer a fall, pass out, and then have to take an entirely different route. It happens in the hunting grounds, as players prepare to fix a portal to progress, are cornered by the shadow, pass out, and have to take an entirely different route. It happens in the hunting grounds a second time, as players finally repair the portal, are cornered by the shadow again, and have to take an entirely different route. And so on and so forth. Beyond the repetition, my biggest issue is that it simply doesn't need to be this way. The doors at the fort could have just as easily led to the system which follows without including the fall, and there's no reason why the portal in the hunting grounds couldn't have directly led to the other world's theatre. In narrative terms, it could have been written into the plot and still made sense. Tarzi, after all, had no other route forward. So many of the environments players explore are a strange combination of awe-inspiring and oppressive, something I'll touch on again a little later, but the way Frictional chooses to transition between them is anything but awe-inspiring. The areas themselves are well-conceived, but the way progression is handled between them is ultimately severely lacking. What I've discussed so far accounts for much of Rebirth's unrealised potential in terms of the way it delivers its narrative, but there is a final bone of plot-related contention I've been keeping to one side, primarily due to it being intimately connected to one of Rebirth's most notable mechanics, which I want to examine in more detail at the same time. I'm talking, of course, about Tarzi's pregnancy. In my view, two of Rebirth's most important themes are coping with loss and sacrifice, and both are tightly woven into the game's narrative, predominantly using the storytelling methods I touched on earlier, in addition to loading screens which tell the story of Tarzi's daughter Alice, and even the occasional Max Payne-inspired nightmare sequence. And with that being the case, including the pregnancy mechanic, through which players can hold a button to inspect Tarzi's bump while she speaks to the baby, which sometimes even helps reduce her fear level, makes a lot of sense. By fostering a sense of attachment to the unborn Amory, Frictional uses the mechanic to push players to think more deeply about the emotional impact the passing of Alice must have had on Tarzi, and how it influences her decision making moving forwards. It's also a novel way of ensuring Tarzi's pregnancy isn't simply used as a plot device, but instead also has an effect on moment to moment gameplay. I'd hazard a guess and say Frictional's hope was that by the time players reach the point they have to pick an ending, the emotional connections to Tarzi and Amory cause a real dilemma. Do they sacrifice Tarzi's happiness by leaving Amory to the Empress? Do they condemn the humans being torched in the other world to a life of unimaginable pain and suffering by leaving with Amory for Paris? Or do they sacrifice both Tarzi and Amory to put a stop to the other world's horrific practices once and for all? The pregnancy mechanic is a great idea because it adds weight to both the story being told during the events of Rebirth and Tarzi's story prior to the game beginning. However, much like the problems with how the game tells its story I talked about earlier, what is seemingly a good idea on the surface arguably ends up actually hurting the experience as a whole because, surprise surprise, it ultimately again serves to interrupt gameplay. Players can check in on the baby at any time, and I'd imagine most will continue to do so for at least a while after the mechanic is introduced, if only to hear Tarzi's extra dialogue. But its effect soon wears thin, and the mechanic soon begins to feel like another way Rebirth stops players from actually being able to sit back and enjoy the experience, especially once the game begins frequently turning the edges of the screen blue when Amory kicks, to encourage players to check on the baby, hear Tarzi's thoughts, and reduce her fear level. And between those pregnancy breaks and the rest of Tarzi's soliloquies during Rebirth, there are two words in particular I'd guess most players were utterly sick of hearing by the time the game reached its conclusion. Hello, my little one. It's little one. Oh, little one. God, little one. Hello, little one. Little one? Little one?
Out of all the unrealised potential in Amnesia Rebirth, the pregnancy mechanic is the one I think perhaps had the most potential, and some of that is even briefly realised during one of the endings, as players are tasked with sneaking past the Empress while carrying a newborn Amory, who must be calmed down every so often in order to avoid detection. It's nothing that hasn't been done in one form or another in games before, but it's a nice twist on the age-old sneak past enemies while not making any noise formula, and fits well contextually within the game as a whole. It's difficult to say whether the way the pregnancy is handled mechanically would have had more of an impact if players weren't already having to get used to a deluge of gameplay interruptions, but whether it would have or not, I do wish the way the pregnancy was handled during gameplay for the majority of Rebirth's runtime matched its impact during the game's closing moments. As mentioned, in terms of gameplay, Tarzi's pregnancy is used to lower her fear level, and it's Rebirth's fear mechanic, which I want to focus on next. This is a system carried over from The Dark Descent, where it was instead referred to as Sanity. In that game, there were four sanity levels protagonist Daniel could experience. His sanity would drain by being in the dark for too long, witnessing disturbing events or looking at enemies, and it could be restored through various methods including solving puzzles, staying near light sources, avoiding further disturbing events, or drinking a sanity potion. If Daniel's sanity dropped too low, players would experience visual and auditory hallucinations and could even collapse, and when his sanity was at its fullest, it became easier for players to spot enemies. It's also worth noting that Sanity was entirely separate to Daniel's health bar, a more traditional mechanic that was also included in The Dark Descent. In Rebirth, Fear works in a similar manner to Sanity, but also functions as a health mechanic at the same time. When Tarzi stays in darkness for too long, witnesses disturbing events, stares at enemies, gets too close to enemies, or takes damage, her fear level increases. As her fear level grows more severe, black tendrils come into view at the edges of the screen, and eventually, Tarzi will experience flashing images combined with sound effects. If players do nothing to reduce her fear level, Tarzi will eventually be overwhelmed and enter a death state, during which players watch a short scene which ends with them being placed somewhere else in the level nearby. That is, of course, unless Tarzi's fear is reduced, which can be done by moving out of darkness, illuminating her surroundings using light sources, staying away from and avoiding looking at enemies, using the pregnancy mechanic when Amory kicks, or consuming the limited supply of laudanum available. A disappointment for many was that the sanity system wasn't included in the Chinese room's pseudo-sequel to The Dark Descent, Amnesia a Machine for Pigs, and it's great to see it return in a different form in Rebirth. Conceptually, it's also a fantastic idea, which makes a great deal of sense in the context of Rebirth as a whole. In one way, fear functions as a health system which is drained by enemies, and that's nothing particularly exciting. But it's also heavily tied to the idea of darkness, and it's here the mechanic really comes into its own. It's designed to make players fear prolonged periods spent in darkness, as prolonged periods spent in darkness, much like encountering enemies, ultimately leads to failure. Much like Amnesia is used as a narrative device to put players on equal footing with Tarzi in terms of the information available to them at the start of the game, and the pregnancy mechanic attempts to evoke the same parental feeling in players that Tarzi experiences, the fear system endeavours to make players feel just as scared of the darkness as Tarzi is. And it works fantastically well. Heading into dark areas in a horror game is scary enough as it is, but it becomes even more so when you know that every moment spent in that darkness is negatively affecting your character. However, the way Rebirth translates Tarzi's fear level rising into consequences for the player leaves a lot to be desired. The tendrils basically act as a health bar, becoming more intrusive the more afraid Tarzi is, and while not particularly irritating, they do become a little too intense in the moments before entering the death state. And the crackling sound, which also indicates Tarzi's fear level rising, is again annoying, but nothing too major. What is major, and is in my opinion a terrible decision, is the flashing images. Let's be honest, they are jump scares, and while the Amnesia series has used jump scares in the past, tying them to an entire mechanic means it's very easy to quickly become desensitised to them due to their frequency. And they also continue the theme of committing Rebirth's cardinal sin, interrupting gameplay. As if all the other ways the game interrupts players wasn't enough, it even includes a mechanic where one of the direct results of failing is that flashing images on screen continue to further disrupt the flow of gameplay. Unlike The Dark Descent, which featured various different effects when Daniel's sanity was low, jump scares are the primary effect of a high fear level in Rebirth, and because of that they become both predictable and frustrating in equal measure. If jump scares were just one symptom of Tarzi's increased terror and were only used sparingly, I'd actually not have much of a problem with them. Granted, they're not overly clever, but a jump scare once in a blue moon can be very effective. 
but in their current guise, they become predictable all too quickly. And in my view, the horror genre as a whole is definitely not one which has traditionally thrived on predictability. What is a bright spot, however, is the death states I alluded to earlier, which for ease of narration I'm going to refer to as death from here on out, even if that's not strictly the case. Once Tarzi's fear level hits its limit, Rebirth initiates a death sequence, during which players are privy to a scene of Tarzi temporarily succumbing to the mysterious sickness and manically running around parts of the area she's in. It's a really nice touch, as it brings meaning to failure and works well alongside the story. Players lose control of Tarzi at the same time Tarzi loses control of herself, which yet again means Tarzi and players' experiences are aligned. And while it's nothing hugely impactful, the number of times Tarzi dies even has a slight impact later on. When Tarzi views her reflection towards the end of the game, she looks more monstrous the more players have died. And in the ending in which she escapes to Paris with Amory, she can sound more like a harvester, again depending on how many times players have died. But while the death sequences do work in that regard, what comes after is perhaps something of a letdown. Instead of punishing players in some way for dying, Rebirth usually rewards players for their failure, with monsters removed from the area where they died, or Tarzi ending up further into the level than where players began, or a combination of the two. I personally have nothing against more lenient penalties for players when they die, but removing enemies and pushing players forward is in my opinion far too charitable. What I would say is that there was a very difficult balance for Frictional to strike. If players keep getting killed by the same monster in the same area, they will soon become desensitised to them in a similar manner to the jump scares I mentioned earlier, and so in that regard it makes sense to avoid making players repeat the same section over and over again. On the other hand, I do think Rebirth goes too far in the other direction. In its present form, death isn't something to be feared as 90% of the time players will actually be rewarded for making a mistake. As it stands, everything surrounding death in the game is a little all over the place, and I think there needed to be a middle ground. Instead of making players repeat a section until they succeed, or rewarding them for failure as Rebirth does at present, what I would have liked to have seen is a slight change in the enemy's position, say to another nearby room or area, and for players to be moved back a short way from where they died, assuming that one or both of those options are possible to do in the environment where death occurs. It would ultimately help freshen up a formula that at this point is beginning to feel extremely dated. The Dark Descent is now more than a decade old, and it doesn't feel like there's any real difference between it and how Rebirth handles death. Frictional hasn't really changed the formula, and it's becoming increasingly easy to see behind the curtains, so to speak, to the point where much of the tension Rebirth works so hard at times to create is squandered because of it. In the Dark Descent, it felt like a fresh approach, but there was a lot of pushback to the way Soma handled its enemy encounters, which often felt frustrating at times, to the point where Frictional actually ended up adding a safe mode post-release, which removed much of the threat its monsters posed. What's clear is that a huge amount of thought needs to be put in by Friction as to how they handle enemy encounters and death in their next title. They just about get away with it in Rebirth, but they're skating on thin ice, and I'm not sure critics and customers alike will be quite as forgiving the next time it happens. Where Rebirth does move away more so from its established conventions is in its environments, especially during its first half. The fort is a particular highlight. It feels like an amnesia environment, but is also far enough removed from those featured in the previous two titles that it makes for an incredibly memorable area. It feels like a place humans actually inhabited, granted one far removed from the kind of habitat most of us will be used to, and it's also where the game's environmental storytelling is arguably at its strongest, combining well with the notes littering the area which gradually revealed what happened to the French Foreign Legion who were once stationed there. As I reached the end of the fort, my expectations were incredibly high for the rest of the game, and I was very excited to see what environments the rest of Rebirth had in store for me. After all, if the quality was this high so early on, Frictional must have had some real showstoppers planned for later in the game. What I got instead was a procession of environments that began to feel more and more alien as time went on. The tomb and hunting grounds which follow the fort are still relatively engaging, a particular highlight being the maze where players meet Leon, but the further Rebirth progresses, the more time is spent in the other world, and I just don't think it lands as well as the earlier segments featuring more familiar environments do. The other world is a bleak and fascinating place that makes a real impact when first encountered, but so much time is spent there in the latter half of the game that it loses much of its mystique by the end. It's not that it's not an interesting environment, because it is, especially at a high level, but the more time is spent up close and personal within its depths, the less it feels like a coherent place that was actually lived in. 
The fort is such a great area because it blends an environment which feels human with decidedly inhuman events and horror elements. The other world, for obvious reasons, can't replicate that feeling of humanity, but because monsters only begin to appear there towards its very end, after arguably too much time has already been spent exploring it, it never really feels like a very threatening place to explore. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that it almost feels more like an environment from Soma than it does one from an Amnesia title. And the less said about the Harry Potter Dementor-esque wraiths which do eventually appear in the other world, the better. There's not much variety in the monsters which appear in Rebirth to begin with, and the way the wraiths do little more than simply patrol areas using a very obvious cone of vision is incredibly uninspiring. What there needed to be throughout Rebirth was a much more considered mix between earthly environments like the caves, fort, tomb and hunting ground, and the other world. And towards the beginning of the game, that's exactly what I thought it was going to feature, with Tarzi's amulet introduced as a mechanic very early on. I was ready to be faced with puzzles which required moving back and forwards between the two worlds, or perhaps even a choice between multiple paths of progression, some based in our world and some based in the other world. Except, the amulet turns out to be barely a mechanic at all. It's more like another button used to open particularly elaborate doors. It does point towards portals when being held by Tarzi, but this is almost entirely unnecessary as the portals themselves are pretty much impossible to miss. Instead of being used to introduce dynamic new choice-based gameplay to Rebirth, the amulet is used as little more than a narrative device, another way for Frictional to easily advance the story to another setting, without having to think too much about how to actually make that transition work in terms of the story. Between the amulet and the constant and abrupt changes of direction when objectives are completed I spoke about earlier, the world of Rebirth feels like one that lacks a foundation of consistency. Instead, players constantly bounce not only between different areas, but between different worlds, with little justification for it given in terms of narrative or gameplay, which ultimately actively detracts from the consistency of environment I previously enjoyed so much in Frictional's other releases. Another aspect of Frictional's more recent titles, which has tended to be somewhat inconsistent, is their endings. The Dark Descent featured three endings, and they were fine. They were nothing overly exciting, but they did a reasonable job of either finishing Daniel's story or leaving things somewhat open-ended depending on which was chosen. Much like the rest of its story, Soma's only ending was fantastic, although to this day I still think swapping the two final scenes so that Simon is shown safe in the Ark before players experience a final gut punch in the form of the other Simon being left alone in Pathos 2 would have made for a more impactful conclusion. Amnesia Rebirth does not build on Soma's brilliance. There are three endings to choose from, and as mentioned earlier, they force players to make a tough decision between three outcomes which are all bleak in their own way, but the scenes which follow each are short to the point of feeling rushed and leave a somewhat sour taste. Frictional did have the weight of players' expectations to consider in that The Dark Descent had multiple endings, but I do also wonder whether giving players a choice was the right decision at all. As the story unfolds, it becomes very clear that despite the crew's protests, there's absolutely zero chance of Tarzi giving Amory to the Empress, even if it means saving the lives of her colleagues in the process. And right the way through to the end of Rebirth, the game does so much to put players in Tarzi's shoes through the numerous different examples I've touched on during this video. So in my mind, there's really only one ending which properly fits Tarzi's character, namely the ending in which she escapes to Paris with the newborn Amory. What I would have preferred Frictional to do was focus on this ending and give the game a more conclusive, but also better fleshed out resolution, because as it stands, the game's conclusion feels incredibly abrupt and in no way did it leave me thinking about it for days after in the same way Soma's, for example, managed. In the end, it very much feels like Frictional wanted Rebirth to feature Soma levels of storytelling while still living up to the gameplay legacy of Amnesia The Dark Descent. Unfortunately, the game ends up sitting somewhere in the middle. Its story is reasonably interesting, and its gameplay is reasonably appealing, but neither stands out in the same way The Dark Descent's gameplay did back in 2010, or Soma's story did in 2015. Rebirth's story is not a bad one, but is told in a way which far too often interrupts proceedings, while its gameplay feels dated and hasn't moved far enough along in the 10 years since the Dark Descent wowed most who played it. It's so frustrating, because Rebirth is an entertaining game in spite of everything I've talked about, and in no way do I regret my time spent with it. But when you delve a little deeper and begin to notice just how many great ideas the game features that simply weren't implemented as well as they could have been, you can't help but feel that Rebirth is only a good game when it had the potential to be a brilliant game. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do let me know your thoughts and consider subscribing to the channel, I've got tons of great stuff coming up in 2021, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.